Is it a 2 times 3 watt LED? Is it a 2 times 6 watt LED? Is it waterproof? Is it a brandless BMW? Is it new? Is it 12 volt? Is it 24 volt? Or is it DIY? Well, Vasa's none of those things because, for starters, the drive circuitry obviously just consists of a single resistor. Yeah. Yes, winter's approaching, and uh, for us who live quite far up the northern hemisphere, that means we're going to have to deal with pretty much 80% darkness for the following six months. So I figured I'd do what well, probably a lot of people do and just check out a few of the cheapo LED light offerings on eBay. Now, all of these lights, except for these things, which are the only ones to come in a proper box cost about 20 US dollars, these cost uh, 15, including shipping and all that. I think one, uh, one of them got stuck in customs, so I had to pay a couple of euros tax for it, but that's no big deal. Uh, yeah, I'm going to just uh, go ahead and have a look at them, maybe do a bit of testing, and see if they're any good. Right, so if we start from the physically smallest one, we have our nice blue BMW with no badge and uh, these uh, were advertised as a 8, 2 times 8 watt uh, work light and well they're anything but you can get them up to 8 watts if you crank the voltage but you're never going to end up in a situation where you can do that and they'd probably burn up anyway we've got some nice chinglish here on the back well, you can read it for yourself if you want to but the important part is we've got glass LENs for our LEDs so I don't think it's an English speaking person who's written this up and none of it really applies either none of these schematics apply since what we get in the box is just LED strips with a piece of rather thin wire coming out of it this is rarely Rarely thin wire kind of speaks for them not being of any amount of considerable power. Anyway, as you did see, they did actually work. But something that has bothered me a bit about this is if you look at the color of that bag, I would wager that this is a rather old model that's been stored away for quite some time since these bags take quite a few years to actually get discolorated unless they are stored very hot or something along those lines. This is just for mounting hardware. We've got a couple of studs it seems and a few nuts, some washers, nothing too fancy. The strips themselves have a hole in each corner, well in two other corners, which are obviously supposed to bolt onto something such as the front of this BMW. It amuses me, they haven't even bothered photoshopping anything in, it's just a picture of a car. Well, they did photoshop the badge out. So, let's hook this up and have a look at just how bad they are. Now, I do not own any proper light measuring equipment, so I'm not going to be able to give you any kind of absolute data on the brightness of these LEDs. However, I do own one of these cheap, uh, well, not particularly cheap, uh, computer monitor calibration tools, a calorimeter, which uh, with the open source uh, calibration software Dispecal GUI will let me just view the direct luminescent measurement that this meter is uh, measuring. And coupled with a piece of paper taped over the receptacle, I'm can just shine a light at this and at a set distance get a relative brightness measurement for all of these LEDs. So at least we're going to be able to calculate a relative light output per unit power and per unit uh, money paid for them. So it's better than nothing but uh, yeah, this is just going to be a back of the envelope kind of deal to see which one of these lights is the best. And here's the testing setup. I've got the lights in the workshop dimmed. I've got the instrument mounted on my third hand, very professionally, back against the wall. And uh, it's right in front of this one meter marker on my workbench. And it's a 90 centimeter deep workbench, so 
it's going to be probably about 80 centimeters between the light on the test and the actual meter. And on my laptop, I've got uh, the software up and running, putting it live data, and we've got about 4.25 candle per square meter coming out ambient. So let's just do drive around quickly, turn on the LEDs as they live air, and see if we get any difference. And yes, we do, we do get. 22.3 so we do get some kind of measurement out of it it's going to prove useful enough to get a relative comparison between the LEDs and in order to ensure a fair test I'm going to run all the LEDs on a constant voltage of 12.6 volts now this is a bit low for a running car and it's a bit high for a <laughs> sitting battery so it's right in the middle of the usage scenarios you're going to be likely to use these LEDs with. Uh, most of these lights do have proper drivers in them anyway, so the voltage doesn't really matter quite well as long as it's high enough. Now the first thing that struck me about these uh, two lights is uh, how very bluish the light is coming out of them, even compared to my 6500K lights in the workshop. I'm not sure how well it shows up on camera, but uh, if this area of the paper is 6500k, this is probably around 8000k, 8, or thereabout. So, yeah, it's not really ideal for being work lights, as they were advertised as. On the box it obviously says daytime running lights, if you want to blind someone. <laughs> but, yeah, not particularly impressed in general, and that does make sense if they actually are new old stock. As, uh, the colour of the plastic bag would suggest. The spread of the light isn't really too impressive either. They don't they don't flood particularly well and they're kind of somewhere in the middle when it comes to light spread in general. If I aim them to at my door back there, they do cover the entire frame of the camera but they have a very sharp cutoff point, as you can see. And uh, rather, this door is perhaps uh, three meters away from both the light and the camera, so the angle is not particularly wide. I'm not entirely sure how I would go about measuring it, but yeah, not really ideal for anything, I would say. It's a very, very peculiar spread. I was surprised by the very sharp cut off, cut off there, which would be useful if you used them on a, on the front of a car, which is legal around here, by the way. But uh, that would prevent them from br blinding other drivers, since they still are reasonably bright. They use about 400 milliamps apiece at 12.6 volts and a bit more at 13, so there are about 5-6 watts somewhere in that ballpark. So. <laughs> Thankfully they were not two times three watts as they were kind of advertised as. Thumbs off for that, shame they're not at eight. Granted, at eight watts I would not expect these to survive very long because running them even at uh, their rated power or rather at 12.6 volts they do get rather warm and uh, my workshop at this time of year is not the warmest so in a, on a hot summer's day if they are exposed to sunlight or anything of that nature, I would not expect these to last a very long time at all. Because they get, they've been run for perhaps two minutes now, and uh, yeah, they're getting warm to the touch, and they rarely get kind of hot to the touch in the long run. I suppose you have to count on that since we don't have any proper heat sinking at all. On the plus side though, they are entirely potted, so there's not a whole big risk of water getting into them. The only place that would happen would be right here by the cable. And you can't really make out much of anything about that, how it enters. With a bit of luck it just runs into the potting compound and that'll be it. If we turn them off, we can have a look at the LEDs, which are kind of peculiar, they don't look much like anything I've seen ever before. There's obviously a big reflector on top of them, well, lens assembly, and we can see how the LEDs shine if we turn down the voltage, thanks to the lack of LED drivers. 
Strangely, these two LEDs light up before the rest for some reason, but in there you can see a little die shining and a lot stronger than these two. This is true for both devices, so I'm not entirely sure what's going on there. Perhaps it is so that these two LEDs have their own resistor and all these run on the same, which does make a lot of sense since if we turn the voltage up just slightly, you can see those come on exactly at the same time. There's no question about it. And the two at the end fade down, last of all. They are bright if you look straight into them, but that's about all you can say about them. The cables they are delivered with are not particularly or inspiring either. These are by far the thinnest cables on the LEDs we're looking at today. And there we have our two light bar things putting out a not entirely astounding amount of light to be honest. They're running off of 12.6 volts, putting out about 10 watts of power and this is what we got on the data. We can see if this color graph is anything to go by the center line is for 6500K. They have a severe lack of green light, which does make a bit of sense if I look at the color of the light. And they're putting out about 42 and a half proprietary nonsensical light units, as I will <laughs> call them, since again, this light measurement is just back of the envelope, doesn't mean anything. However, we can use it relatively. And we've got here, I've put together a little Excel uh, sheet where I've put in the data about it and uh, I've essentially added voltage input power columns, real input power and our relative input light output measurement and a light per watt and light per dollar bar. And we can see from this that these provide the most amount of light per unit power the lower voltage you go. So that quite clearly proves my theory that their regulation simply is a few resistors since you're going to have less loss in the resistor the lower the current you run through it. And uh, one of them seems to be less efficient than the other since when I hooked up two of them the light per watt went down just a bit. I tried adjusting them to see if it was the angle or something, but no, one of them seems to be a bit less efficient. And uh, we have a, about one to three and a half units light per dollar. So that'll be our baseline, and I'm reasonably certain the other lights are going to be far better in every conceivable way. Alright, so after that disappointing display, we have something a bit more proper to deal with. This is one of the $20 lights, well, the rest are all about $20, and this one was advertised as uh, 18 watts. And they said it was 3 watts per LED, I believe, which are not very straightly mounted in there. I don't know how well it shows up on camera, but it looks rather cross-eyed at a first glance. Either way, that's not a very, very big problem, since these are all floodlight well, they claim to be floodlights, so how the LEDs are mounted doesn't really matter since they're supposed to illuminate a wide area anyhow. This is the slimmest of the proper ones, say for the 8 watts uh, bars, and uh, it's got a rather nice looking uh, heatsink on it. It's curved and fancy and it just looks overall sleek. You get to uh, a mounting kit with it. I haven't tried this one and it seems to be stainless steel stuff. Of course you can't speak of this painted black thing that will probably be the thing that rusts away and leaves you with a light hanging by its cables but eh, they tried. You can also get this little Allen key which I'm, I at least have about 20 of from various stuff. They like giving those away. You also have a little Nylon locking nut there, which is a nice touch. Definitely nothing wrong with that mounting kit. The light itself, 
this plastic feels a lot sturdier than on the other ones, I can tell you that. And the whole thing, well, it's just one cast aluminium thing, so this rail has a quite good sturdiness. It's got good chances of survival since there's nothing really fragile and exposed on it. Although the cable inlet doesn't leave a whole lot to the imagination. I can imagine that not being properly potted. So, might be a risk of water leakage there, or if it's sitting aimed downwards and you have a bit of rain and it catches some water in there, that might not be a good idea. I'm probably going to either use this indoors or just do something about that before using it. The beam pattern on this light is a bit more focused than the 8 watt LED bar thing is, but it is considerably brighter despite running at only about 14, 13, 14 watts. And uh, I can demonstrate that quite well by simply turning on the one of the 8 watt bars. There you go. Now it's on. <laughs> so even though the beam is a lot more focused on this uh, so-called 18 watt light, you can see that it provides a much larger area of usable light due to how much brighter it is. And its superiority becomes quite a bit more obvious when you look at the test data and you can notice that uh, the 18 watt light, despite running at only 13.72 watts, will give you about five times more light per dollar than the 8 watt twin lights. And the performance per watt is just... Th there's no contest. The best that one could perform was 6.73 light units per watt, whereas this one gives you well, 24 to 22, pretty much. I believe <laughs> we have a superior light already, but we'll have to see how it stacks up to the rest of them, which should be provide a bit more challenge. You also need to keep in mind that since this 18W uh, light, as a proper LED driver, it's usable up to a much higher voltage than the little LED bars. Since these just have a resistor, they would just run at a higher and higher power until they burn up, whereas this one is rated for 30 volts. The next one in line is this rather square looking thing running 8 LEDs of some unknown manufacturer. This was advertised as a 24 watt light running from 10 to 30 volts. And I purchased two of these and neither of them was of course 24 watts. Uh, this one is 19 watts roughly, and the other one is about 14. Despite that, they're both better than the LED bars, but <laughs> uh, probably everything in this review is going to be. Now, the actual light, there's not a whole lot to say about it. It's uh, rather big and has a large area to it. This is not going to be particularly good if you want to mount it on a vehicle, since, well, this is not the face of aerodynamics. <laughs> and uh, it has a rather large plastic reflector, or well, shield, whatever you wish to call this, which is probably going to be rather susceptible to damage from whatever might hit it. I would not, uh, I would just not want to risk this. Hmm. I just noticed it has a nice big scratch from the factory there. Oh well, doesn't bother me. These do come with a nice mounting kit as well, which is made entirely out of stainless steel. And I have built a, a work light, battery powered work light, out of the other one already. Got this quite a while ago. And I have used this stand to continually adjust the lamp up and down and up and down. And it hasn't shown any signs of uh, unscrewing itself or anything nasty like that. However, I did uh, change this uh, little original not for a nylon locking one and I used a kind of different washer since it wouldn't really fit properly otherwise but hey who cares I would say this is a good mount and the lines themselves otherwise eh, just big cast aluminium things really not much to say about them this uh, there's some rubber grommet thing here which guards the cable and next is a bit of bend relief which I would trust this more than the 18 watt light. This seems like a more waterproof design, although you can coax it into getting a bit of a gap there. The cable on these 
is also quite nice. It's very thick, very flexible. You really can feel like you can confine, can be confident in this cable lasting for quite a bit of bending and turning and faffing about. So props to that. That also goes out for the 18 watt one, by the way. As for the uh, light image of this uh, light, it's very similar to the 18 watt model, although it has a bit more very wide angle spread. As you can see, if I turn it very far away, you get uh, uh, a bit, quite a fair bit of light, just residual light shining off to the sides. This is probably due to its very large surface area and spread out LEDs. Otherwise, it has a slightly whiter, less bluey uh, color temperature to it. It obviously uses different LEDs than the 18 watt one. I'm not sure if that'll show up on camera, but that's the 18 watt one there. And this is the 24 watt one. So, really, it doesn't seem to provide too much more light, not to the naked eye. But that could be because of various factors that will show up a lot better on the data. And here's the data for our three reviewees thus far. And a bit to my surprise, it actually becomes quite obvious that the 24 watt light provides both a lot more light for your watt and light for your dollar. The, even the weaker one, the 14 watt one, just uh, gives you more more light all over. I mean, at 11.76 watts, it's putting out more more light than this one does at 13.72 watts. So, I'm surprised to see that. They, you don't really notice that much difference in real life. But, yeah, I suppose it's probably cheaper to manufacture them in that large square shape than it is to make them small and thin. So, in a way, it makes sense that they'd use better LEDs and better drivers. Anyway, these are also uh, 10 to 30 volt rated, but they start dropping off there around 11 volts. But it's still, you get usable light, so to a, a cycling a lead acid battery or something along those lines, which is probably what most people use these with. This one has to be the best price performance favorite thus far, but we still have the final 27 watt monster left. So let's have a look at that one. And now it's time for the big boys. Yeah, 27 watts rated. Just look at the massive size of that heat sink. And notice how it looks exactly the same as this 24 watt one, except it's fatter. And the heat sink, well, well, it will keep your LEDs cooler. This one, both of the ones I bought, put out exactly 20 watts. So, yeah, 27 watts gets you a bigger heatsink, but not a whole lot more light. As for the build quality of these, you do get some more stuff for your identical sum of money, $20. This glass sounds a lot fatter, well, glass plastic than the 24 watt ones. So they do seem a bit more durable, they have more mass in them. Well that's obviously because of a heat sink. And they do come with without any reusable packaging, but they do come with a nice Chinglish manual which gives you some specifications which Eh, don't really matter. I suppose you get the size. If that's correct, I can't be bothered checking. Probably fake IP67 rating. <laughs> 120 degrees operating temperature. Yeah, that's a big heating <laughs> one. That's, that's not going to work out. It is easy in to install. Easy to install. And it is shockproof and waterproof better. Fantastic. Well, I suppose that is true. I mean, they are better than these ones. So, for once, they're comparing things to their own products. Here's the mounting hardware stainless steel, same as the other ones. Quite nice and dandy. 
suppose it's not going to be quite as sturdy since these do weigh considerably more. I mean, if I take each of these in hand and gauge on feel, I'd say this is maybe one third to almost twice as heavy. And of course, a lot fatter, so you're not going to be able to aim it as far high up as you can the other ones. That's pretty much the maximum angle on those, while it's. Gah. Like that on these. So, yeah. Upsides, downsides, these probably are going to last longer. The reflector seems to be similar, same deal, you can't get into them non destructively. Lots of glue splatter here even to remind you of that. Same rubber grommet thing for the cable out. Identical cable except one cable's blue now. Well it doesn't, this cable feels a lot more plasticky than the 24 watt ones. And of course you do get an extra LED so they are not pushing as much power through each LED on these which is a good thing for longevity. So props for that. Really, if you want a reliable light, this is definitely more the way to go than the 24 watt ones. As for the projected light, these do have the softest uh, spot of them all, although they don't have as much light coming at the edge, right in the peripheral vision of them, so to speak, as the 24 watt ones. And that we can compare the 24 and 27 watt ones straight off. That's for 24 watt one, and that's for 27. So uh, you can see 27 is slightly wider, slightly bluer, and has a slightly more fussy spot. But the quality of the light of the 24 watt one really. It comes off as better to my eyes. It's got slightly greener. Yeah, I'm switching back and forth so much you probably lost track. This is V27 was one. Yeah, despite having an extra LED and a, and extra 3 watts specified output, it's pretty much the same really. It just seems to have slightly lower quality LEDs. Oh well, different quality LEDs. I prefer the light of the 24 watt one, that's for sure. And if we look at the data, we can see that the 27 watt one is just pretty much playing catch with the 24 watt one. They're pretty much identical all over. Granted, the two 27 watt ones I bought were of the exact same power, pretty much, which can't be said for the 24 watt ones. So I, of course, have a very small sample size here, so I can't say for certain if. Uh, these 24 watt ones have a poor quality control in general if I just got a bad one with this one or if most of them are about 15 watts if, if most of them are well then there's a reason to buy this 27 watt one since you at least get a 20 watt light, LED light because the light, amount of light per dollar you get with this is really rather poor although not as poor as the 18 watt one and by far not as poor as the <laughs> dual 8 watt ones but all in all the performance of this thing is reasonable it's I can't say much more than I said about the 24 watt one it's the same thing exactly except a bit larger it's got a slightly better cooling system and a slightly lower price I suppose you get more aluminium for your price and for a final bit of data, I went out and uh, took a few identical exposure pictures of all the lights in action. On the top left, we've got uh, one of my 1 watt Cree R2 based flashlights, which is putting out probably around 100 lumens of light in a fairly tight beam. So that should serve as a bit of a reference point. And on the left, we've got uh, one of the amusing. 8 watt bars running at 5 watts straight off of a lead acid battery and just to the right of that we've got both of them hooked up and put together using rubber bands shining in the same direction you can see some funny light discoloration in the edges and that is the optics producing some kind of 
rainbow effect, they essentially <laughs> turn piss yellow in the edge of the light. But uh, I suppose to give them some kind of uh, credit, they do have a very even spread of the light, except for in the edges where they're slightly brighter and yellow. So, yeah, one good thing, hooray. Now on the lower left corner we have the single 18 watt light running at 13.8 watts. As it say, properly regulated light, it doesn't matter the input voltage you give it. And it's got a very wide throw. It throws a lot more evenly than the other lights. And if you compare it to the two images to the, to the right, where we have the 24 watt one running at 14.5 watts and the 27 watt one running at 20 watts, you can see that the 13.8 watt or 18 watt one at the left uh, has a more spread out uh, and possibly more useful light distribution. Now about the 24 and 27 watt ones I did not include a picture of the more powerful 24 watt one since uh, the, it practically looked identical to the 27 watt one save for the slightly warmer color temperature. And it, Rarely the 24 and 27 watt ones seem to be pretty much identical in every aspect as to how they throw the light. But uh, the 24 watt one seems to use slightly better LEDs. And when we look at all the data compiled, there really is only one winner of this test, and that is the so called 27 watt light. Uh, it's uh, Basically just the best over the board. It's got the best absolute maximum light output of the lot. It's got the best light output per unit watt on all voltages. And it's got the best light per dollar value of them all. <laughs> so, really, on a completely objective standpoint, there's no excuse to buy any of these other lights if you just consider its performance. Now, it does have the disadvantage of being rather big, rather thick and rather clumsy, and it weighs more than any other light in the test. So, if you really have a weight constraint or something, you may want to consider the 24 watt one, which has, well, slightly worse, but still very acceptable performance. If you're really strong on weight and space, you, well, you don't have any other choice than this one, really. And Let's just not bring up the two dual 8 watt uh, lights since they <laughs> have scored uh, just, I've marked it out in red, they've scored the lowest maximum light output, the lowest uh, light output per unit power by a very large margin, and the lowest light output per unit money by a very large mar margin, pretty much an order of magnitude worse than the 27 watt light. So. <laughs> I suppose you've got to say something good about them or it would not be a review. So they do have the smallest form factor. I mean, you can't compare them to any other light. They, you can fit five of them inside of one of the 18 watt ones. And they do have this uh, rather unique mounting system with just two studs going into them. So yeah, they might have their uses, but to be frank, these are seven years out of date because they are obviously old stock they used to be sold as one of those tack on LED daytime running lights and nobody bought them because they are ridiculous and don't work properly and yeah they ended up on eBay for cheap money so really you have to have some pretty good excuse in order to buy those you might as well just go with a 20 watt incandescent light bulb, you're going to get the same amount of light. On a completely subjective level though, my favourite of the lot is the 18 watt light. Since it has the smallest footprint, still puts out a reasonable amount of light. And uh, it just feels a bit more thought out than the others. This is the only option really if you want to mount it on top of a vehicle that's going to be moving at speed. since. These bigger ones just uh, don't have any <laughs> excuse with the shape. They're going to 
probably give you a considerable hit in your fuel economy. I do however have a minor complaint about the mounting hardware for the so called 18 watt lights and that is that the screws I got with mine were slightly too long so it really wouldn't mount properly unless I added a pair of washers in between here it would hit the edge here and essentially be impossible to mount properly it would just flop about it's nice and stiff now that I've got proper washers there and uh, the screws are able to clamp on but yeah might be a bit of a concern although I would of course recommend having some nuts, bolts and watches available when you're trying to mount something like this since you can't rarely trust the Chinese factories to put the proper number in to begin with. Who knows, maybe these are supposed to ship either with one step shorter screws or include washers, but somewhere along the supply line it didn't quite work out. And that pretty much concludes my review and I'm going to be off to install all of these wherever they need to be installed. Although I do admit it's tempting to explode one of the cheap bar ones but I have a pretty good application for them which requires them to be intact and as with most eBay thingies I may or may not uh, link a link to auctions down below auctions tend not to last very long and uh, you really have to go by the pictures or product descriptions when you buy these things trying to purchase the exact same lights as I got is well going to prove a challenge one month after the publication of this video and I've had a few of these for such a long time that the auctions may not even be there anymore. So I wish you luck in finding a suitable LED work light for you and I should also point out that none of these are spotlight types, they are floodlights of course. This is because I required floodlights <laughs> for my applications and yeah that means I'm going to buy floodlights and not spotlights. I am not sponsored by anybody. So if you looked for a spotlight review, I'm sorry I could not help you, but I'm glad you watched anyway. And to anybody else, thank you for watching. Cheerio.